looking back again I can get it, I can make it, yeah, I know it And I'm never looking back again Yeah, I'm never looking back again I can get it, I can make it, yeah, I know it And I'm never looking back again What's up guys, Garrett here with Derange and I have Eric with uh, Carrick's Adventures, right? right? So we are here today for the first time in a long time I have a T4 sitting in my garage. It's been a while, I think I sold mine back in, uh, man it might be back in October of last year already, like it's been a little while. Been a while. I'm trying to remember when I sold that but it feels like an eternity. I miss the machine and I know that we'd like to provide you guys with a lot of content. Um, covering the T4. So I have been following actually Eric here on his Instagram page for a while watching this machine and I've seen it out of Sand Hollow a few different times. So I thought it would be the perfect T4 to bring in here to uh, do a walk around on. So perfect. to let you guys know what we have going on in this setup. But before we do that, I don't know, Eric, tell us a little bit about your Instagram page or how you got started with the T4 and kind of what brought you into the UTV stuff. Cool. Um, yeah, so my Instagram's uh, Terex Adventures, and um, you know I kind of actually stumbled upon the Terex. Um, a friend recommended that I look into it as I was kind of looking at uh, getting a UTV, and uh, stumbled upon it, and then I found this one uh, locally. Um, kind of lucky, had a lot of things on it, uh, specifically the HCR kit already on it. Um, and uh, but what I was looking for was was basically, you know, a shorter wheelbase, shorter overall length machine, um, and something that could fit the family. So a four-seater, and it needed to kind of fit all that criteria, and it seemed like the Terex did that. All right, so here we go. So I got Eric standing here. We're gonna go ahead and start with the tire, wheel setup, if he's got spacers, all that kind of stuff, and then we're gonna jump into the suspension setup on this machine, which is like knocked it out of the park setup. So anyways, I'll turn the time over to him. All right, so so tires and wheels. I went with uh, Sedona Rockabillies, and I did System Threes. I believe they're SB Fours. I don't remember the exact model. Um, went with this setup for a couple reasons. First, um, I wanted a tire that was a little more uh, specific to the rocks. I was running the Tux, Tusk Terabyte before. That's a great all-round tire, um, but I wanted something just a little bit more sticky for Sand Hollow, Moab, that kind of stuff. Um, and the Rockbilly has done fantastic. Um, another reason is, you know, the, the Terex is underpowered compared to a lot of other vehicles. Everybody knows that. And this is a very lightweight setup compared to a lot of um, others. The initial setup that I had on here was, again, terabytes with some tusk wheels. And this 32 inch wheel um, and tire setup is actually one pound less overall than the 30 inch tire and wheel setup that I had before. And so I'm really happy about that. Cool. So. All right, well, so he's got those on all, and you're running the same size, all four, all, four, all the all way, the way around. around. And yeah. spacers or no spacers? No spacers on this. So okay. I'm running a four plus three offset on this. Um, and uh, with the HDR kit and that offset, it gives me basically exactly 72 inches outside to outside. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that next. Yeah. He's got quite the setup for the suspension. Yeah, so this is really what sets this apart and makes this thing a monster out in the rocks is that HDR kit. Um, HDR kit, king shocks, and this thing is smooth as butter. Yeah, I'm telling you, just the look of this setup is, is awesome. So one other thing with the HDR kit, which is really nice and also allows for the bigger tires, is it actually pushes, pushes the wheelbase forward two inches and in the back back two inches and so you get an extra four inches of um, of wheel of wheelbase in this thing and um, again I mean the big thing is, is what that does is that allows you to run these bigger tires I've you know I'm running 32s I've seen it on 35s <laughs> I don't I don't think I'd go that big obviously but uh, but uh, I, I I think I could easily run 33s if I really wanted to um, and so, you know, that's, that's one of the nice features of the, of the HDR long travel kit. So you're mentioning the, the way that it rides. Mm -hmm. So 
explain that you you know you're saying it's really smooth so are we talking like all the little chatter that's around all that kind of stuff that's right yeah just just anything so any little chatter you know whoops through the sand that kind of stuff i mean this thing just i mean it just eats it up it just eats it up and then you're going through rocks anything like that there's just so much travel it's so smooth it, this thing's just it's awesome so i'm guessing if you have this set up you're running zero sway bars front and back so there's no sway bars in the back, but okay. yeah, I've disconnected my sway bars in the front. Okay. Yep. So I've got these here, under there. I've still got it attached. I've just zip tied it up out of the way. Oh, okay. Right there. So sway bar's still there, just disconnected, yep. zip tied away, and then you just run it without it. That's so. right. Yeah. All right. A lot of people always ask about that. What do you think? Have Have you ran it with, with the I have. Um, with it on or? Yeah. So the first few months I had it, I had it on there, left it on. <clears throat> And then once I took it off, I could really tell, tell a difference. You know, you, you get a lot more sway, a lot more movement. And uh, sometimes that's good. Uh, sometimes that's bad. So you might want to stiffen it up at times if you're running through the sand or something a long time. But, okay, uh, so if people are watching, because they've always had this question, would you basically vote sway bar or no sway bar? My vote would be no sway bar. The next thing, and let me give you a good, uh, a good shot of the suspension back here as well. But uh, I see that you have some type of a pipe set up. Yeah, so I, I just threw on a slip-on HMF pipe. Um, it doesn't really add any horsepower, anything like that. Um, more for sound. Everybody likes their rig sounding good, right? Mm -hmm. Something that sounds good, not too loud, you know. Um, stock exhaust is a little tinny at times, and this just gives it that nice deep rumble, a little okay. purr to it. So do you think like, compared to the stock because a lot of people always wonder what the exhaust is like what you said it gets you know loud mm -hmm. you think it actually mellows it out so it's just a different sound which different isn't sound. too bad yeah okay. no so they so hmf actually has has two versions of this they have the xl and the qs so the qs is what i've gone on here and decided to keep on there i actually got both of them from them um and did a review and comparison of the sounds the X, the xl is their louder version Um, I like the sound of the XL just a little bit better, but it's just a little louder than what I w would want. Okay. So I decided I uh, stuck with the QS version. All right. And one thing I did notice that I didn't notice originally walking around this all of a sudden sitting here is that uh, he's got a bed lift. I it do. looks like to me. Huh? Yeah. So this is the HDR bed lift. And really the main reason for this is to allow for your 32 inch tires in the rear just because you have so much travel that uh, you can kind of see on the mud flaps a little bit there, I still touch every once in a while. So, but that allows for that, that travel. So that's four inches right there. Four inches, mm -hmm. okay. So we're just talking about those right there on the bed. And to be honest with you, I wasn't even paying attention either because the look, I think this T4 has an excellent look. I think that has a lot to do with the bed being up too. I think that mm -hmm. makes that line a little bit better. Yeah, it changes it and it looks real good. So, and while we're down here real quick, he also has some uh, pod lights he's running and, and it looked like they were hooked up to your reverse. Yeah, reverse so, lights. so that's a kit from Group Performance. It just ties in uh, with pins right into the, the stock connection there. Okay. And so when you throw it in reverse, it comes right on. It's pretty slick. And that was with who again? Brute Performance. Brute Performance, if you guys haven't right. checked them out, They've got uh, different products that they sell on their website, and uh, you can get this set up for them. So, and it all plugs right in, like you said, right? Real mm -hmm. easy. Super easy. Yeah. So, really awesome. You look back here; these tires just, man, look at the shocks up here. I just, yeah, it's quite the setup. So, all right. The other thing too is um, I didn't even mention the you got the mud flaps here. Mud flaps, yeah. Those are just kind of nice, you know. Where this is so much wider than stock, you know, again, 72 inches, um, just to prevent rocks, mud, all that kind of stuff from flipping up, flipping up into the cab, right. that kind of stuff. Okay, so I guess we're going to move on from top here. So we'll start with uh, the risers on the door because I noticed that first thing when I came in. That's right. So this was, you know, a really good upgrade. So if any of you have ridden in the T4, this is the stock door line down here. And what you get is you end up feeling kind of like you're sitting on the machine rather than in it. 
And uh, so Jason Glover of Glover Customs made these, um, called them up, ordered these, and uh, you know they're really a super easy install. They're very rigid, and what it does is it just kind of feels like it encloses you and makes you feel a little bit more comfortable in the machine. So yeah. I know my wife was ecstatic with that one. Yeah, I yeah. I agree. I have to say, if I was to get my T4 back. I would put these on instantly. Now that I see them in person, I would definitely put these on for the kids and everything. Even for myself, because one thing I can tell is now you got a better armrest. That's right. Never had armrest before. <laughs> no. There was no armrest before, that's right. No. All right, so what else do we have? It looks like, why don't you tell us about your mirror, your light setups in the front, okay. um, and why you run a half windshield instead of a full. Cool. So, you know, I like the half windshield because it just gives me you know options basically and this one's a little bit different so this one's from Tusk and what I can do here is I can take these bolts out up top I can actually fold this down and then take this off and secure the windshield all the way down if I want right there so and then you're running no windshield, no windshield if you okay, want cool. you know and um, <laughs> and it's fantastic it keeps I mean I can keep my hat on it blows the air right over the top of our heads so I really like it over the, the full. So one thing I do have to mention with my half windshield, I had a tinted one. And the thing on the Terex that's way different with half windshields, because I'll be honest with you, most half windshields on other vehicles, you get the wind right in your face. But on the T4, it does truly bring it up and right over the top of your heads and out the back. Like it, it works extremely well it really does. on the Team 4 with, with the half windshields, I think. It does. Yeah, no, it's really good. If, so. it, if it wasn't, I might go full, but it really works pretty well. So yeah. keep it that way. Yep, and then um, that helps with heat and everything else in the cab, more air flow, it does. you know, yep. so. Yeah. All right, how about your lights? Yeah, so you this guys. is this is a new addition here. Originally it had a light bar up top, but when we went to Custom Cage, which we can talk about in a minute, we decided to go to some pods and went to the Baja Design Pods here and I'll tell you what, those things give out a ton of light. And then what I wanted was a rock light setup also. And I wanted something different than most because most rock lights, you get the light under here and you still have a shadow out here on the light. Um, and so we mounted these right underneath and it gives a ton of light out. And what, um, what brand are you running? I haven't even looked up. So these ones are Baja Designs Oh, they are Baja, well. okay. Yeah. So these, cool. are, these are S1s. Okay. And uh, I believe they're the work scene, so it just gives you a nice flood, you know, um, because there's, I've been out on the rocks a couple times at night, and when you're making a turn and you can't quite see what you're doing, it's a little sketchy when you know there's a little drop or something and you can't quite see what you're doing. And so this has been fantastic. So actually. what we'll do is let me grab the lights on the garage once you flip them on and I'll just see what we've got here. Cool. All right, so it's so hard to capture on, vi on video. It really is hard just to capture all the light, but I mean, just to give you guys an idea, there's my KRX in the back. I mean, look at that. And then if you look on the outside, you can really see how well it fans out. Like Eric was saying for rock crawling, that is a nice setup. That works extremely well on how he has those pointed. Um, I didn't even think about running a smaller light like that. And uh, I think that's an extremely good idea. Yeah, so you probably are happier with that than even the light bar on top. I am actually. It's nice and clean, small, and uh, out of the way, and it works extremely well. Like I said, so I'm super happy with. It. All right, so we're working our way around. I do notice a couple things here. He's got some different headlights. That's right. Uh, these so are what also are you running there? From Group Performance. Okay. Um, nice thing about these is they actually have a high low instead of just on off, and so you can you know it's just like a three way switch. Um, which is really nice when you, if when and if you need it. Okay. Um, the other one running a 12 inch Tusk light bar here on the bumper. Um, so these this one points down just a little bit more, where the top ones are more kind of out and up in a flood. Okay. And so this one's going to point down just kind of directly in front of me. So everything's got its own little purpose and whatnot. And then also you've got a winch down here. What what kind of winch are you running? That's right. So I've got a Super ATV. Uh, 4,500 pound winch here and um, uh, I liked it a lot uh, one reason is because it's just it's all black and it just kind of fades in you don't really notice it um, it's got a synthetic rope 
and then I just I just added this from you know Amazon or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of a, a normal hook. Yeah, it works a lot better. Yeah. I mean, the big thing is, in case you guys are wondering, synthetic rope all the way over cable all day. I switched mine out instantly after I installed it, and it is just ten times better than a metal cable. So. All right, so let's work our way over here. And actually, we're missing something. Before we go inside, we need to talk about the cage. Because the cage it. gets this thing the, the look. It does. And uh, of course the safety, but it definitely has a look. So yeah, tell us about the cage. Yeah, so uh, I contacted a local guy, new guy uh, here in town, um, uh, Voodoo who does custom cages here in Hurricane and uh, wanted him to build me something obviously for safety, but something that's gonna look good too. And I think he absolutely nailed it. Um, it gives it a little sleeker look. It looks a little faster. <laughs> it's not faster, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> it adds but, 10 horsepower. That's right, I, I wish it did. Um, you know, but he did uh, a fantastic job. It looks amazing. And, you know, just having that, uh, that peace of mind when you're out, you know, crawling and whatever um, goes a long way especially if you've got your family in the rig it uh, it's nice to have that peace of mind like and I said. then if you can get up close I don't know if the camera will catch it oh it is catching a little bit what kind of powder coat do we got here that's just a flake powder coat a little silver um, and a little bit of gold fleck in there yeah it just looks a little good. something to, to stand out but nothing too and then here's kind of what it looks like inside and if you guys notice the nice roof on it He's also got the like, I think they call them airplane clips or something on them. Yeah, so easy um, to take the roof off if needed. Yeah, that's yeah. sweet. So cross brace and then over here, the voodoo emblem yeah. and the setup. And what I think my favorite part is, is how he came down in the back. And what's really cool is he got, he has this free floating type setup, you know. Yeah. And maybe you can do a bumper later, you can do something, but that, yeah, that looks pretty dang cool, so. Anyways, very, very, very nice cage. Even comes in here as far as harnesses, grab bar. Very, very nice cage. So, and what do you have up here? So that is actually a fire extinguisher. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so um, I saw that somewhere at one point, something nice and small, out of the way, uh, lightweight, and um, it's supposed to be really good. Uh, oh. The actual extinguishing is supposed to last about five times longer than a standard fire extinguisher. Uh -huh. Hopefully I never have to use it. Yeah, but it's small and it's right there. That's right. So. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to jump inside. And I did notice one thing as soon as I open it. He's got a uh, throttle max, a pedal max over here. What are they called again? Throttle max. Throttle max. There you go. He's got a throttle max inside. I had one. It works great. It made a big difference for the T4. Big difference. Um, but yeah, let's start in the interior. I can already tell you right now, he's got quite the setup with the seats and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so PRP seats, obviously. Um, honestly, maybe the best upgrade that I've done. Um, like I said, the HDR kit was already on here, so um, that obviously sets this apart. But as far as the things that I've done, the, uh, the Tarek seats are lacking. And uh, these things just, they feel more secure, they're more comfortable. Um, the only downside compared to the Tarek seats, you can take that bottom seat off the, the stock seats. These ones are, are, are fixed. Um, so you have to take the whole seat out, but, you know, um, easily give that up for the, you know. Comfort. The comfort, the safety. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> when, you're, when you're off camber and you don't feel like you're sliding left to right, um, it's a big deal. It's and then the deal. back seat as well. Yeah. And who made the back seat for you? So ordered the back seat from Combustion Motorsports. Um, and uh, one of the first things we did, um, because we've got three kids, so uh, had to make room for everybody. So as you know, on my T4, I ran the bump seat. Um, it worked out great, but honestly, I was just being extremely cheap and not going with the setup. <laughs> this setup by far is way like the best setup you can do for the kids. Especially what I like about it is it has the four-point harnesses um, across for all of them as well compared to the stock machine And if I wasn't being cheap, I should have gone this route So yeah. Very nice. Okay. What else do you have in here? I noticed a few things I'm actually gonna walk around and let you point out some things and I'll come on the other side okay. 
So, so one of the things that I was able to do with the door extensions that the stock doors aren't allowed to do is be able to run these bags. So I got this Super ATV bag, um, and I actually think it's designed for the Ranger, if I remember right. Um, but uh, just allows me a little extra storage where the normal stock Terex door doesn't allow for. Just and you got a room. pad. Yeah, and a knee pad, so you, you know, a lot more comfortable, a little more storage, quick access. It's really nice. And then I also so. noticed you got a steering wheel upgrade. Yep, uh, steering wheel upgrade from Pro Armor. Just, you know, nice middle steering wheel instead of the plastic one. Yep. So, um, the other thing you've got is uh, radio from Red Rugged Radio. Um, communication uh, out on the trail, I've learned, is, is. is key. So... So tell me why, and, and I'm guessing you're running headsets, right? Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So so I we got to get this out there right now because a lot of people have had the argument about it. It's the first time we've been running um, comm systems in our in all of our three machines. But explain to them the difference that it makes, especially when you're in the Terex. But in general, um, I think it changes the game completely. Abs absolutely. So a lot of guys run stereos and stuff like that. Um, and honestly, I, I considered that. But... The, the Terex is it's loud honestly um, and uh, so you just have to turn that stereo up so loud to even get over the you know the, the engine noise and to be able to have radios with comms you know what I mean have the headset drown out a lot of that noise and to clearly communicate with other cars especially um, it is huge you know even if it's just like hey you know turn a little driver or hey we missed so you know like I said so you know if we can just spot a little bit or you know say take a left at the fork anything like that um, really comms are invaluable honestly yeah I just you know after using mine now and having them in Dave and Joe's rigs if I was to have the T4 over again I would scrap all the stereo stuff never buy it and would have just gone straight to the comms myself so I think hands down especially in the T4 for the noise reason but just generally speaking, being able to talk to your kids, being able to talk to other cars, just everybody being able to talk without trying to yell. <laughs> it was kind of, yeah, it was, it was really annoying, I can tell you that much. Um, I also noticed a shifting knob. Yep, you got shifting that changed knob, out. just a billet shifting knob, some, nothing special, but just a little something more solid than the stock plastic one. Okay. Yeah. You've got all just normal stuff there, mm -hmm. and you do have quite the rear view mirror though. Yeah, so this size of one is really slick. Um, Gives a nice wide angle view, with convex, and then it also has dome light in there, multiple settings, and then as well as other colors if you want, which is nice for at night if you need it. Cool. So, and where'd you get this off of? Uh, this one, I think I just, honestly, I just ordered from Rocky Mountain ATV. Rocky Mountain had it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, cool. And the fire extinguisher, is that a Rocky Mountain thing or an Amazon thing? Or? No, the, so the Element fire extinguisher is what it is. I actually bought it directly from their website. Okay. So, and then they have a roll bar mount like that, and there's a few different uh, other uh, options of mounts. Options, cool. Yeah. All right, so just to let you know, whatever he has on here, we'll throw links in the descriptions, Amazon, wherever we can find them as well, um, plus the other companies and whatever. We'll throw it all in the description. So if you're looking at getting the same stuff, you can easily just push on that and, and go to their website or whatever to buy it, so which is pretty cool. All right, did we miss anything on this because there's so much? Um, yeah, let's show this over here. Okay. So one of the things with the winch and the lights and things like that is I actually mounted a um, Odyssey yellow top um, is that right, Odyssey Yellow Top? I think it's the Odyssey, yeah. yeah. yeah anyway, so, so I've, I've got that battery <clears throat> mounted under the seat. But once we went to the PRP seat, we couldn't really access that to be able to charge it or anything like that. Okay. So I mounted these little cables here that go to the battery that we can just easily access and, and oh, charge nice. when needed. Yeah, and those would be so. easy to get on Amazon or whatever? Absolutely, got those off Amazon. Did you use a metal back plate or anything for support? Or did you just go right into the plastic? Just went right into the plastic, right on the edge, and it's, I mean, Held that's, up just fine, that's huh? solid, yeah. There you go. And then that way you can get to the battery, charge it, you can hook up a, a battery tender or yep. whatever if it's sitting for a while. That's right. All right. That's cool. All right, let's jump into something on the very bottom here we haven't mentioned yet, and that's the skid plates. Yeah, so honestly, skid plate is something that I would definitely recommend, you know, 
at least down here, you know, where we're in the rocks a lot, sand hollow and that kind of thing, uh, skid plates for sure. So I went with SSS off-road and they are fantastic. So what's nice about these ones is they, so they actually come up and over the side with a built-in rock slider. So you don't need to have anything like that. It also comes up a little bit in the front there as well to protect the front a little bit. And so these SSF, um, SSS off-road skid plates have been fantastic. Honestly, they're great. Sweet. Would highly recommend them. Okay, so we talked about the cage, but we also need to talk about the roof. And I need to mention the roof because it's the same company that makes our windshields that we sell on our website. So uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about your roof. Yeah, so Voodoo works with Dirt Warrior to make the roof. Um, and it's a little harder on the KRX because this is wider cage than most. And so they did a really good job. And, uh, and then I went over to a uh, union graphic company here in, uh, in St. George, had to make me a little template of my logo and uh, go from there. So they put their plain clips on, which is really cool, easy to remove, which is ideal. And we'll jump on here. And there's the logo, looks nice. So this works great when you're doing drone stuff and right. you know, all that kind of stuff. Something that I want to do to that, the KRX, but I can't with that roof, so I might be talking to Dirt Warriors myself. But yeah, it looks good. So there's the roof. Custom roof, custom cage, they go together really well. All right guys, thanks for watching this awesome T4. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and leave the comments below. Eric from Tarek's Adventures and us as well will try to get back to you and answer any questions that you have. Also, make sure whatever you pack in, you pack out. And this is Garrett with Deranged Off-Road. That's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen.